Hi everybody and welcome to Euro Channel. My name is Dr. Stefan Bundrock. I'm a board certified urologist and specialist in sexual health. In this video, I will update you on the astonishing effects I have lately seen with regenerative therapies for erectile dysfunction as part of my personal evolution in sexual medicine. However, I would like to start with an observation that reflects a broader pattern often seen in the adoption of novel medical treatments. When I was a kid, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a rising star and bodybuilding gained some minor public attention. Back in the 1970s and 1980s in West Germany, bodybuilding was considered very assy. Now you've learned a new German slang word that's tricky to translate. Assy is short for asozial, asocial, and carries a specific social stereotype in German-speaking countries, often tied to classist prejudices. Be cautious if you decide to use it in conversation. It might come back to haunt you. So back then, we were told by the media, doctors and scientists, that anabolic steroids had almost no effects. I mean, that became collective societal knowledge. However, the ones using steroids knew better. It wasn't until the mid to late 1990s that the anabolic effects of steroids no longer were a matter of debate. I just had to think of this in connection to regenerative therapies for erectile dysfunction. It's the same pattern. Similar to the historical discourse around anabolic steroids, treatments like platelet-rich plasma, PRP, and shockwave therapy for erectile dysfunction indeed seem to occupy a space where insiders report success, while mainstream medical discourse and regulatory bodies remain cautious or dismissive. Shockwaves for erectile dysfunction have been around since 2010. I started treating patients in 2017. Still, I have a lot of colleagues who doubt or downplay their effectiveness. Despite the data accumulated over the last 15 years, and the treatment recommendation in the European Association of Urology Guidelines. The FDA hasn't even approved shock waves for men's health. It's the same with the consecutive so-called regenerative therapies like platelet-rich plasma, stem cells, EMTT, and so on. On the other hand, that's not surprising. Novel treatments always require many years to gain acceptance. Of course, there are safety concerns and long-term data are important. But there is also ignorance and skepticism that is rooted in conservative thinking. I have seen my first robotic prostatectomy in 2004 at the Karolinska Hulküset in Stockholm. I was part of a research group at the Karolinska Institute at that time. Already back then, these guys knew that the functional outcomes were better than with the open approach. In experienced hands, there are better continence and erectile function rates and faster recovery. In 2007, I proposed this new method to my patients. Nobody wanted it. In 2011, there were huge discussions about patients demanding the robot. In 2025, the robot has become the dominant method in many parts of the world. There is still some discussion going on, but it has become softer. Why am I telling you all of this? Because I, as an insider, know that regenerative therapies are effective in many men. Not in all. You never get 100% in medicine. Last year, I started combining my treatments and lately, I have condensed my approach into a three-day course. It was absolutely necessary to come up with something new because some of my patients come from far away. I will link you my videos on the specific treatments I am using at the end. But generally, I am combining the P-Shot with shock waves and electromagnetic waves. The P-Shot is a treatment derived entirely from your own blood, making it 100% natural. Through a specialized centrifugation process, I separate plasma and platelets to create an injection rich in growth factors. These growth factors stimulate tissue regeneration, promoting improved erectile function. Similarly, shockwave therapy uses acoustic waves to trigger repair mechanisms in the tissues. 
It's important to note that true shock waves are a distinct technology. They differ significantly from radial pressure waves, which are often misinterpreted as shock waves in the US. I've addressed this issue in a separate video. Finally, EMTT, extracorporeal magnetotransduction therapy, uses electromagnetic waves to deliver magnetic energy directly to tissues, promoting cellular regeneration in a novel and complementary way. By combining these therapies into a three-day bulk treatment, I can optimize outcomes while reducing the logistical burden for patients who would otherwise require weeks of multiple visits. This approach is designed to maximize convenience without compromising effectiveness. The question is, is it equally effective? Many of you have been following my channel for some years now and you know that I give you updates on my results while medical evolution progresses. In the first days of 2025, I received emails and patient reports with very encouraging treatment outcomes. I'm not a fan of testimonials, so I am telling you another story instead. 20 years ago, I frequently visited a saxophone shop in Berlin. The owner, Mike, wasn't a friend of many words, so to speak. They always had some old Mark Sixes advertised on their website, and whenever I was in Berlin, I checked them out. I only played the ones that were characterized to have a good sound, because very soon I figured out that Mike was a master of understatement. These horns were just incredible. So I guess combination therapy with shockwaves, electromagnetic waves and platelet-rich plasma gives good results. Here are some videos that might interest you. If you have made it so far, please like this video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.